Your Honor, good morning again. John Rockwell on behalf of Mr. Clayton, who's present before the court. <clears throat> Your Honor, we are prepared today to uh, withdraw the plea receiver plea of not guilty as to counts one through four and enter a plea of guilty as to those counts. He would be adjudicated guilty at a sentencing hearing. And Your Honor, this is a plea to the court with the exception of what's written in the plea agreement. Counts one and two are uh, secondary felonies punishable up to 15 years in prison. Counts three and four are third degree felonies punishable up to five years in prison. We agree in the plea agreement that the defendant shall not ask for a downward departure at sentencing. In exchange for that, Your Honor, the state of Florida agrees not to file any additional criminal charges against the defendant related to his employment at Douglas Anderson. The state of Florida is permitted to elicit testimony, although Mr. Clayton is not admitting to any further criminal conduct uh, relating to these individuals, but the state of Florida is, a, is permitted to elicit sentencing testimony from individuals with initials KF, AB, CD, BL, ND, IM, and JC. He shall pay applicable court costs and the court would reserve jurisdiction for 60 days to determine any restitution that may be applicable to ER, that's the uh, listed victim in the four charges. My client has signed the plea form, Your Honor, as have I and the assistant state attorney. We also uh, drafted, Your Honor, an addendum to the plea of guilty, although the court is not required, as you know, to impose any condition of probation as part of the sentence. Um, the court, uh, we agree, should warn the defendant that he is subject to potential sex offender probation conditions and th th none of these charges, Your Honor, carry a mandatory or uh, at all uh, sex offender designation. But Mr. Clayton understands that by pleading guilty, the court could impose both a term of probation and potential sex offender probation conditions. So he has signed uh, both the plea form and the addendum out of ten years. And Your Honor, for the record, his minimum guideline score is 33.6 months in prison. <laughs> I do. All right, Mr. Clayton, I've been handed this four page document <clears throat> titled Plea of Guilty with Negotiated Sentence. Have you had sufficient time to review this? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Did you read it yourself or was it read to you? I read it myself, Your Honor. Can you read or write the English language? Yes, Your Honor. And how far did you go in school? Um, Postgraduate. Okay. On page three of this document, and also on the very last addendum page of this document, where it says defendant, are these your signatures? Yes, Your Honor. Do these signatures mean you've read, understood, and agree with the contents of the document? Yes, Your Honor. So is it your understanding that today you are entering pleas of guilty to the four different counts with which are charged in case number 2023-CF-3145? Yes, Your Honor. And those are, uh, in each of counts one and two, offenses against students by authority figures, and those two counts are each second-degree felonies punishable by a maximum of 15 years. In count three, it's for indecent, lewd, or lascivious touching of certain minors, which is a third-degree felony punishable by a maximum of five years. In count four is for the unlawful use of a two-way communication device, which is also a third-degree felony, punishable by a maximum of five years. Are those the four crimes to which you are pleading guilty? Yes, Your Honor. Is it your further understanding that you have reached some form of an agreement with the state, but you have not reached a fully negotiated sentence with the state? Is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. So you are entering these pleas of guilty, what we call straight up to the court or in an open plea to the court for me to decide the appropriate sentence. Is that your understanding? Yes, Your Honor. Has anyone told you what I would sentence you to in order to get you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. Do you understand as I sit here today, I do not know you, your history, your background. I do not know all the facts and details of this case. So I do not know what I would sentence you to. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. So we are going to have a sentence in hearing on another date, at which time you and your attorney can present facts, evidence, or witnesses for my consideration, Likewise, the state will be able to present facts, evidence, or witnesses for my consideration, and then I'll impose what I believe is the appropriate sentence under the facts and circumstances of this case, and of course, within the bounds of the law. Do you understand that process? Yes, Your Honor. And so that we are all on the same page, 
Uh, the state has announced, as they did at your arraignment, that the minimum sentence under your sentencing guidelines calls for 33.6 months in Florida State Prison. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And the maximum, of course, would be the statutory maximum for each offense. So 15 years on each of counts one and two, or five years on each of counts three and four. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. As part of your, I guess, partially negotiated sentence, you also understand then at that sentencing hearing, you will be precluded from asking or requesting this court for a downward departure from those sentencing guidelines. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. In addition, uh, you will be adjudicated guilty of these four offenses, and the state has agreed not to file any additional criminal charges against you related to your employment at Douglas Anderson. Is that also part of a partially negotiated agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Lastly, the state will be permitted to elicit testimony from you at sentencing or to limit test, is it to elicit testimony from other alleged victims unrelated to these charged crimes? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so while I would not normally be allowed to consider that, the agreement by both you and the state is that the state may elicit and I may consider um, testimony from KF, AB, CD, BL, ND, I am and JC at your sentencing hearing. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And lastly, I will, of course, have to um, assess any mandatory court costs, which in this case are $518. I would also need to assess mandatory surcharges, which in this case, there is one associated with count three in the amount of $151. And I will assess restitution payable to ER, but will reserve jurisdiction to determine the amount of any necessary restitution. Do you understand all that? Yes, Your Honor. So has anyone promised you anything other than that in order to get you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. Has anyone threatened you or coerced you in any way in order to get you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. Are you pleading guilty freely, willingly, and voluntarily? Yes, Your Honor. And are you pleading guilty because indeed you committed the, these offenses? Yes, Your Honor. All right. In addition to any sentence I may impose, do you understand I could also impose probation with sex offender conditions? Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And the addendum to this plea of guilty form contains those 18 sex offender conditions that the court could impose. Have you reviewed these conditions? Yes, Your Honor. And where it says your signature on the end of the addendum, does that mean that you have reviewed, understand, and agree with uh, those conditions of sex offender probation? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So as you stand before me, are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, medication, or any condition that prevents you from understanding what I'm saying or what's occurring in court? No, Your Honor. Have you had sufficient time to discuss this case with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Has he answered all your questions to your satisfaction? Yes, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with his representation? Yes, Your Honor. Is there anything he's done or anything he's failed to do that would require more time for you to consider your case, your pleas, or any possible sentences? No, Your Honor. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you are giving up certain constitutional rights, including your right to a jury trial, which would require the state to prove these charges against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You're giving up the right to have an attorney assist you in trial, and if you couldn't afford one, one would be appointed to you. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You're giving up the right to cross-examine witnesses called against you at trial or to present witnesses on your behalf at trial. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You're giving up the right to remain silent and the right to appeal these judgments, and that means appealing the issue of your guilt or innocence. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Also, if you are not a U.S. citizen, by being convicted of these crimes, you will be subject to deportation under our federal immigration laws. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And by being convicted, or if you have ever previously been convicted of a sex crime, do you understand that you may be subject 
to an involuntary civil commitment as a sexually violent predator under the Jimmy Rice Act. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. State and defense, is there any DNA mm -hmm. evidence in this case that would exonerate the defendant? None known to the state. And there's none known to the defense, Your Honor. We would stipulate to a factual basis for the purpose of the plea. Okay, I'll find there is a factual basis then for the entry of Mr. Clayton's pleas of guilty as to counts one through four. I'll also find as pleas have been entered freely, willingly, and voluntarily with a full understanding of the nature and consequences of doing so. So, Mr. Clayton, I'm going to accept your pleas of guilty on counts one through four, and we will pass the matter for a sentencing hearing to the afternoon of June 14, beginning at 1.30 p.m. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I'll see y'all all back here on that date and time. And, Your Honor, did we just we cover the PSI waiver? Yeah, I did see that on the plea form. He's entitled to a PSI, correct? He's never been arrested before, other than this case. Entitled to a PSI, but they've waived and check that box in the quick one. All right, so Mr. Clayton, you understand never having previously been convicted of a felony, you're entitled to a pre-sentence investigation report which is prepared for the court's review prior to sentencing. Now this report may contain favorable information about you, it may contain unfavorable information about you, but by agreeing to a waiver, you're telling me you do not want that report to be prepared, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so one shall not be ordered. So with that, we'll pass the case then to June 14, 1.30 p.m. for sentencing. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you very much. Yes, you may.